Victory Park. This is News 8 Now. And so I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. That there have been and continue to be those in government who are actively attempting to undermine this administration. Please be seated. The debate over leaks from the Capitol takes center stage today. Fired FBI Director James Comey testifies to Congress about his firing and why he leaked his memos of conversations with President Trump to the press. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon for News 8 at 4. I'm Alicia Laventer. I'm Jason Wheeler. That hearing lasted just under three hours this morning. It covered a whole lot of topics, too, including the Russian election interference investigation, Comey's firing, and as we mentioned, the leaking of his memos to the press. ABC's Janae Norman has a play-by-play -play of all that went down. You solemnly swear to... On Capitol Hill, Janae Norman, ABC News. Now, during today's testimony, President Donald Trump was silent on his Twitter account, but his son wasn't so quiet. Yeah, a lot of people wondered how that was going to go, uh, but Don Jr. was very active on Twitter when that testimony covered the Michael Flynn investigation specifically. Want to run through it here. He did uh, several tweets in a row. The first one saying, Flynn stuff is BS. In context, two guys talking about a guy they both know well. I hear, I hope nothing happens, but you have to do your job very far away from any kind of coercion or influence and certainly not obstruction, he says. He went on to say in another tweet that came by, thank you, Jason, knowing my father for 39 years when he orders or tells you to do something, there is no ambiguity. You will know exactly what he means. And in this final tweet, he says, so if he was a stronger guy, quoting uh, Comey there, he might have actually followed procedure and the law. You were the director of the FBI. Who are you kidding with a laughing emoji mm. there? All right, so uh, pretty contentious there on social media today as all of this was happening. Now, Comey's testimony was one of the most watched events across the country. Don't know how much of it you actually caught today. Take a look at these videos from across Dallas, though. Many televisions and restaurants tuned in today just to see what the former FBI director would have to say. There were even watch parties that were held in some places for that testimony. Our Kevin Reese was at a watch party held at the Dallas County Democratic headquarters, and he joins us now from the newsroom with how they felt about Comey's testimony. Kevin. Well, I was warned by a former U.S. attorney just yesterday that the Comey hearing would produce very little smoke if it produced any fire at all. Today proved that finding something damning or burning in that testimony depends if the person looking for that fire is either a Democrat or a Republican, of course. Democrats held that watch party at their Dallas headquarters near Fair Park. Several dozen people were there watching the testimony over donuts and mimosas and an occasional game of Comey Bingo based on buzzwords they heard during the testimony. And the Democrats seemed to glean what they expected from the hearing, that the former FBI director deserved a chance to reclaim his good name, that in their view, the president's version of events simply can't be trusted. But there was a Republican quietly sitting in this Democratic watch party, too, and he heard something completely different. Well, I, it's pretty damning testimony. I, I knew it was going to be uh, pretty extraordinary, but it's even more salacious than I thought it would be. There was nothing obstruction here and, and impeachable. That's, <laughs> you have to have something to charge on that, and there's nothing chargeable here at all. And as we showed you a bit ago, watch parties were held all across the country today, mostly by Democratic parties in their individual areas. But as we sent our cameras to restaurants, delis, and even Love Field today, we also noticed a lot of people chose not to watch at all. But we'll have more reaction for you and further discussion about what happens next coming up on News 8 at 5. For now, live in the newsroom, Kevin Reese, Channel 8 News. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. We have some breaking news now uh, of a church bus crash in Atlanta. Take a look here at these live pictures from the scene. You can see several cars there on the roadway. We're hearing the bus was carrying 11th and 12th graders. You can see the bus overturned on the road there uh, towards the top of your screen. I believe another vehicle appears to be severely damaged. Lots of people are now being treated for their injuries. Of course, we'll continue to update you as we learn more about this story. All right, uh, shifting gears here now. Let's check on what the weather is looking like. Colleen Coyle is out on the patio on this fair afternoon. Looking like you're getting a little bit of shade there, Colleen. Just a little bit trying, Jason. It's been another warm one outside across North. Up in that 10 day forecast in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen.
Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused carbon monoxide levels to spike inside a Dallas home where three people died. Raquel Rocha would have turned 84 today, but last night she, her husband and daughter were all found dead inside their home. The medical examiner is now working to confirm if their deaths were caused by carbon monoxide. It's known as the silent killer because you can't see it or smell it. Okay, speak right with now. Shane, please. But you don't sick and tired of you guys. The last Jesus guy that came here, you did the same thing. Get the hell out of here. You may remember that audio released last month before Montana's special election. You can hear then candidate Greg Gianforte body slamming a reporter from The Guardian. In the hours after the audio was released, Gianforte said the reporter touched him and refused to leave. Well, today, though, U.S. Representative elect Gianforte released an apology for his actions. He wrote, My physical response to your legitimate question was unprofessional, unacceptable, and unlawful. That apology letter is part part of a deal that was made with the reporter in which Gianforte also pleads no contest to misdemeanor assault. 125 homeless pets from overcrowded shelters here in North Texas are getting a chance at a new life. Yeah, the nonprofit called Wings of Rescue swept them up this morning to take the animals to the Pacific Northwest. They're uh, calling this Project Freedom Ride. Take a look. The shelters here in Texas are overrun with strays and owner surrenders. Um, each shelter here in Texas is, is euthanizing almost daily. The Pacific Northwest particularly, their shelters are not full and people in, the, in those areas are, are looking for, for pets to adopt and we have more than enough. Project Freedom Ride is a nonprofit organization that relies on donations to save and transport dogs. So if you'd like to learn more about them, you can check out their Facebook page. Yeah. Very cool there. Hopefully they find all of them homes. It's kind of surprising that the shelters are overflowing the way that they are here, though. So much so they have to fly them to the other side of the country, so to speak, to sort of get them a new home. So, so we hope looking, somebody can get them. And if you're home. looking for a little family member, there's still <laughs> plenty of them at the shelters around here. So uh, definitely look into that. As we head into summer now, you know that those 100 degree temperatures are going to come sooner rather than later. Yeah, They're I'm, coming. I'm hoping that's later for sure. <laughs> the heat happen. can really have an impact on your body, as you likely know. So after the break, we'll walk you through the three stages you should look out for to avoid heat related problems. Also, James Comey's testimony was just as juicy as many people thought it might be. But what did we actually learn from the hearing today? Coming up at 430, a former U.S. attorney is joining us to break down those three hours of testimony. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We have some information now just coming into our newsroom. Exit polls predicting British Prime Minister Theresa May's Conservative Party will win the largest share of seats in today's election, but it could fall short of a majority in Britain's parliament. May called the vote weeks ago to increase her party's influence, but it became about terrorism after this month's deadly attack. May said if her party wins, she will crack down on extremists. All right, back here at home now as we inch closer to the hottest part of summer, it is important to remember the impact that that heat can have on your body. It's major and you can pretty much break it down into three stages. The first stage is when your body temperature is between 98 and 103 degrees. That's when your heart rate goes up and and you can become nauseous and even start vomiting. If this happens, you want to get out of the sun immediately and under some ice cold water. The second stage is when your body temperature is between 104 and 108 degrees. If that happens, you need to head to the emergency room right away. If your body temperature gets any hotter than 108 degrees, that's when it becomes life threatening. The enzymes in your body stop functioning appropriately and you go into multi-organ failure. So your kidneys stop working, you stop urinating as much, uh, your liver stops working, and then ultimately your heart will stop. Here's an extra tip for you. If you're hot outside, but you're not in these dangerous body temperature levels, you still want to cool down. You might want to try putting ice packs under your armpits. That's where a lot of large blood vessels are. And so putting those ice packs there can help cool you down more quickly. One snack you might want to eat while you're trying to cool down? Ice cream. That sounds good. We need one more uh, reason to do that, right? But there are so many different brands and prices out there. Some of them can get pretty expensive, they, too. They can. The question is, is that extra cost worth it? Bill McGinney puts that question to a taste test. 
Free samples of ice cream? Of all the taste testing we did, yeah, the ice cream was probably the easiest to get people to try. Like this one better? I had a lot of choices, but in the end settled on a plain old lesser known vanilla and the widely known Hagen dazs The price difference dramatically through the roof. The lesser known vanilla, $1.99 a half gallon. I think I like this one. Mm, that one. The Hagen dazs was $13.49, a price difference of $11.50. And guess what? Yeah, the Hagen dazs was a frozen slam dunk. Everybody preferred it. But while saying that, nobody really disliked the other. They just liked this one a whole lot better. On the consumer beat, trying to save you a little bit of money, I'm Bill McGinty reporting. When he reveals the prices like that, <laughs> that was painful. It's easy to like the other one. <laughs> but Hagen does does taste really good. good. Stuff, but I'll come to your house to get that. Yeah. You go okay, ahead and buy I'm not that. Sharon. We'll mm -hmm. be right back after this. <laughs> All right, Colleen, so beautiful sunshine today, hot out there, but we have some updates as far as droughts go to talk about. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite day. It's Thursday. Because that's usually when you get that update. Uh, yes, Thursday morning. And we were eagerly awaiting. Stuff. Yes, good stuff. <laughs> I know. So it, it's great news. We were really excited for Thursday because you we were had. You excited? Uh huh. We, yeah, let me say I was very excited <laughs> about Thursday because we've had a week of rain. And so we did. We put it was a, unpleasant. It, well, we put a big dent in the drought. But it which was of necessary. Course, is some great news. And you guys got to pay attention closely. I have a little game to play in a second. I know. All right. Here at home, too, you can play along as well. Have you been watching the NBA Finals? I have been. You should be watching, Jason. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. If you haven't been watching, you might want to because they <laughs> might be over almost as fast as they started after beating the Cavaliers in a close game last night. The Golden State Warriors. One game away now from a sweep uh, that could happen tomorrow and they would be claiming their second title in three years. This is big stuff. Kevin Durant has pretty much been the real MVP of the finals. He's been on a scoring spree. He dropped at least 30 points in each game, but none bigger than last night's game. Down two, he drained a three pointer over LeBron James to give the Warriors the lead for good. Golden State goes for the sweep and the title this Friday. That game tips off at 8 p.m. right here on Channel 8. So you'd think being a NASCAR driver, you wouldn't need pointers on actually driving around a track. Or maybe you would. <laughs> uh, a group of drivers hit the track in Iowa this week to learn from some police officers this time. The officers showed the drivers the courses they use to teach students in driver education classes. This course is pretty fun. I think, um, oh, I can only speak for myself, but I think Ben probably enjoys this just as much. Um, get a little bit more speed and a little bit more uh, you know, it looks calm when you're standing there watching it, but if you go ride along, it's, uh, you know, you're going pretty fast and you're doing pretty tight maneuvers. Yeah, that certainly looks harder <laughs> than just speeding around the track over and over again. Police said that the uh, drivers struggled just a bit with the first course, but eventually they pulled through. I mean, after all, this is kind of what they do for a living. We'll be right back. Live from Victory Park. This is News 8 Now. I was fired because of something about the way I was conducting the Russia investigation was in some way putting pressure on him, in some way irritating him, and he decided to fire me because of that. There you heard it right there. Former FBI Director James Comey revealing for the first time uh, out of his own mouth that uh, why he believes President Trump let him go. Thanks for staying with us for News 8 at 4 today. I'm Jason Wheeler. Uh, Alicia will be joining us here in just a moment. Uh, Comey testified before a Senate committee in Washington, D.C. today. Don't know if you had a chance to catch it. It was several hours worth of gripping testimony. We aired it all live right here on Channel 8. In case you didn't get to see it, some of the takeaway headlines today. Comey saying that the White House lied plain and simple about his firing. He also revealed he he did keep memos of his meetings with the president. That's been widely reported, but we heard it from him today. And it was Comey himself who gave those notes to a friend to recently leak to the media. Including, I understood this to be my recollection recorded of my conversation with the president. As a private citizen, I felt free to share that. I thought it very important to get it out. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. 
Now, a lot of eyes were on that hearing this morning, but were there any real takeaways? What exactly did we learn? Because as we all know, this is very complex. So joining me now is former U.S. Attorney Paul Coggins. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Want to get straight to the fact that Comey admitted to leaking information to the press, the memos regarding his meetings with the president. What repercussions, if any, I believe people are wondering, will Comey face for having admitted to doing this? Well, he pointed out he did that mm -hmm. when he was a private individual. Okay. There are also uh, memos he made of his own conversations with the president. So unless the president argues somehow those were privileged, somehow there was some executive privilege to them, uh, Comey's probably not in legal jeopardy for that. It makes him look a little odd to have done it, to have done it through an, uh, a go-between. I mean, the question I always had when I listened to that is, mm -hmm. if it was so important, why didn't he release them to the press right. directly? Do you think that's damaging that he then waited because he finally admitted to having done so? I think it damaged his credibility a little that he did it that way. I mean, this whole thing is about credibility. I right. mean, so he said, he said, do you believe Comey? Or are you going to believe President Trump? And I think President Trump's credibility took a lot of hits from Comey. He basically said he lied about why he fired me. But I think Comey looks a little odd doing it this way. It would not have been my instinct if I'd been in his mm -hmm. position to leak it to a friend. If you're going to release him, do it directly. We're talking about semantics a lot here as well with Comey's testimony. Comey said as far as he understood when the president, not in so many words, maybe suggested that he let the investigation into Michael Flynn go, he was hoping he would do so. Was there any obstruction of justice there? Well, I think if you're looking, is there enough that a prosecutor could get an indictment and get that indictment to a jury based upon what was done? I think the answer to that is yes. Now. The president may not be subject to it because he's the president, but I'm talking about any figure having done that would be in some legal jeopardy. The question is, if you have A's word against B's word, most prosecutors are not gonna bring that case unless there's some corroboration of the witness. Now, are these memos made at or near the time of the conversation, are they enough corroboration? That's why if there were tapes, I don't believe there are tapes, if mm -hmm. there were tapes, that would be critical for a prosecutor. So we know that this all happened sort of within a unique situation where it was just the president and just Comey. And you sort of heard the senators almost admonish Comey for not telling the president, hey, these sorts of interactions are inappropriate. And I'm wondering, do you think it was really Comey's place? And also, did that sort of make the president look as if he doesn't really understand how his job is supposed to be conducted for having met with him in that way. I'd say all of the above. And I, and I hate to criticize Comey because that's a lot of Monday morning mm -hmm. quarterbacking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Comey felt as if he was deserted to some extent when the attorney general left the room and he was left all by himself. Uh -huh. But I think it is absolutely the case that the president does not understand. There is a tension between the Department of Justice and the rest of the members of the executive team. That tension exists because the Justice Department may in fact end up investigating members of the executive team. In fact, was doing that until the attorney general recused himself. So I think President Trump did not either understand it, mm -hmm. did not appreciate it, or ran right over that. After Comey's testimony, we heard uh, Trump's per President Trump's personal lawyer say, President Trump feels vindicated today. We at least learned Comey admitted that President Trump himself was not under investigation. Do you really believe President Trump has been vindicated with what we heard? Well, first of all, like I said, President Trump's credibility took a lot of hits mm -hmm. today. So mm -hmm. if I were President Trump, I wouldn't feel vindicated. I might have my lawyers say that, but secondly, Keep your eye on the ball. The issue is Russian collusion mm -hmm. in the election. Mm -hmm. So even though Mr. Trump personally may not be a subject or target of the investigation now, it's pretty clear his campaign is. He's the head of the campaign. I think the whole key to this thing is going to be Michael Flynn at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. He wants a deal. He's in legal jeopardy. So Bob Mueller, Robert Mueller, who is a dogged investigator, is going to have to at some point decide, do I immunize? Uh, Michael Flynn to find out what he knows about others. Well, it's clear that this is far from over, but we at least thank you for stopping by today to help us understand the complex nature of all that we've learned uh, this morning with Comey's testimony. So appreciate your time, Paul. My pleasure. Jason. All righty, let's talk about other things now. A lethal street drug is causing a wave of deadly overdoses in central Georgia. Doctors say it may be laced with opioids. Officials say it is dangerous and may have already killed up to four people. Ron Jones reports.
I love her. I still love her. Filled with tears and a heavy heart, Corey Bailey shares his deep love for 36-year-old Amira Gillins. Is she gone? After 11 years, Corey lost the love of his life this week. I don't have money to bury her. We suspect that this is an opioid overdose. Medical staff from various hospitals in central Georgia say four people have died in 48 hours from a dangerous street drug. And investigators say Amira is one of the four recent victims. There is a new drug that's surfaced in our community. It's being sold on the street as Percocet. Percocet, a prescribed painkiller. The GBI is now trying to track down and put handcuffs on the people selling them as illegal street drugs. They say it's linked to dozens of overdoses and the death is slow, leaving victims gasping for air. Patients are experiencing significant and severe uh, decreased levels of consciousness and respiratory failure. Nothing was moving. Corey says he found Gillens on the bathroom floor, unresponsive, struggling to breathe. Her breathing was like deep, loud, and slow, as though her breath was leaving. What about the authorities' allegation that Amira may have fallen victim to the dangerous street drug? What do you think about that? P possible pills off the street? No, no, all, all of her pills were all prescription. Nothing off the streets. Mm, sounds absolutely miserable. Again, that was Ron Jones bringing that story to us. Uh, if you have been just a little bit south of us to Austin any time recently, the past couple of years even, you know that traffic can be miserable there. And now we have an idea of why things get so clogged up. Yep, the Business Insider just named the Texas capital the most popular place to live in the U.S. right now. Austin is beloved for its live music scene and some of the country's busy, biggest rather music and culture festivals. The city ranks third for best new grads to start a career and it's also number one on U.S. News' overall best places to live in America. So the second most popular place to live right now, Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Austin. It is a great place, is it? Uh, but yeah, people like pass around these little memes that says Austin city limits uh -huh. uh, and it has population full. Oh, like they, they like don't, they don't want anybody else there. They put population full. It's almost like it's a it's a victim of its own success. How's the weather? Is it humid down there? It's just as bad as it gets here. Worse? Maybe a little more humid. Okay, then I might entertain it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, degrees of separation matter, That's especially what does as we it get for into me. Summer. Sure does. Uh, still to come this afternoon, one person, one vote. That is how it's supposed to be anyway. Right, but coming up next on News 8 at 4, we uncover one man who cast a ballot in last month's election 12 years after his death. Yeah. This afternoon, a big discovery in Dallas's voter fraud investigation. News 8 has learned that a dead man voted in last month's election, at least according to the records. Right, but that's not all. Several other people had applied who were supposed to be dead as well. Political reporter Jason Whiteley has the story you'll only see on News 8. Protecting the next week with a little bit of rain sprinkled in Tuesday through Saturday. Alicia and Jason. All right, so remember tomorrow the possibility of Rhett Rather, according okay. to Colleen. <laughs> Calling out Colleen. Cor she never messes up. We have to capitalize <laughs> when she does. Now I'm going to mess up. Why? Yes, you will. Uh, all right, so for it. let's talk about moms out there. A lot of them are blogging, oftentimes in the middle of the night while they're feeding their babies. It's kind of an easy way to share the ups and the downs of motherhood. Yeah, but they're not just doing this for fun. They're actually cashing in and making big bucks on their posts. So Trisha Hendricks shows just the new opportunities for moms that really didn't exist until now. I've been blogging for many years. The sky's the limit. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, parenting's hard, but they're cashing in on it. You think you'll start blogging? Uh, I'm I sure could. you have lots of opinions on fatherhood, Jason. I think that you you have more as they become teenagers. <laughs> There's so many start things I could write blog, about. Start that blog, Jason. Every time I make a comment on Facebook or something, though, my kids find out now, and they're like, why yeah, did you share like that, that with everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah, All I right, catch so it. it'll be anonymous if he starts blogging. I have to be. A person's love for costume jewelry just made them $800,000 richer. Man, this is like, wish you had this one, right? <laughs> Somebody bought a ring. I think we're going to show it to you somewhere. There, there it, is. it is. They thought it was just costume jewelry. They paid 13 oh bucks for it at an open market sale. That was back in the 80s. <sighs> they learned it was actually a 26 what? carat diamond. Are you serious? Uh huh. 
Uh, they had it appraised and realized that. It was auctioned off and sold for $847,000 in London yesterday. Again, they paid 13 <laughs> bucks for it up front. Not a That's bad deal ridiculous. there. That's ridiculous. 26 carats? They thought it was fake. I kind of feel bad for somebody who sold that to them, though. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, they didn't know what they but had. But what a score for the person who bought it, right? If something shines that much, buy it <laughs> Check up it if out. it's 13 bucks. <laughs> uh, all right, so you may have been among them out there. Most of the country today watching as former FBI Director James Comey testified before Congress uh, throughout the day. Yeah, lots of people watching. Lots of people, of course, taking to social media, on Twitter even stating your case for who should play Comey should Hollywood ever decide to make a movie. So here are the front runners for the drama. Michael Shannon was a popular choice. Check out these two tweets saying when the eventual biopic of this mess comes out, Michael Shannon ought to play hashtag Comey. Paul saying role of a lifetime for Michael Shannon. <laughs> Director Comey there in the picture you see on the left. Interesting. And then we uh, had another popular choice that's been bandied about on social media. Kyle Chandler there pictured. Uh, he played an FBI agent in Wolf on Wall Street. Here's Ooh. what people are saying about him. Ma Matt Dentler says first still coming from the upcoming Comey movie. Uh, let's <laughs> share another one with you here real quick. This one comes from Ultralight Meme. Has Kyle Chandler closed the deal to play Comey in American Crime Story yet? Now, people feel Chris Cooper right here huh. would be a natural. You see the split screen there. He has played an FBI agent before. And so Jeremy says, I nominate Chris Cooper to play James Comey in the inevitable film that's going to come from all of this. Another tweet from Rochelle saying, Chris Cooper can play anyone and I make you like them. Meantime, after all all the back and forth. Mm. Will we really want to see a movie about all of this? That's a someday? good question. Maybe 20 to 30 years later, but it's still a little fresh now, isn't yeah, it? A little too soon. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Lots of headlines coming across the newsroom today and even more for News 8 at 5. Here's John with the preview. Next at 5 o'clock, much more, of course, on that big show in Washington today. James Comey's testimony before the Senate committee had just about everybody watching and talking. We'll bring some highlights on what he said and, of course, the reaction. And we're learning more about that family of three found dead in their Dallas East Side home last night. The tragic story. Much talk about high levels of carbon monoxide inside. That's all coming up next. All right, silent killer there. We'll uh, talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday afternoon. By the time we see you again, it will be, be Friday. Fun. So enjoy your evening and we'll of course see you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Have a good one.